it could be a huge conversation, but some of it has to do with um, how quickly we learn to inhibit initiating with our tail. So some of it is that our tail is not an okay place to pay attention to. I think we get that message a lot along the way, along the way, pretty quickly. Um, and that, that not our tail specifically, but that, that stuff that happens around our tail is dirty and bad and we should control it and keep it hidden and secret. And certainly we do want to learn to control defecating. It's not that we should not learn to control that, but that everything around there is somehow not to be explored, I think is a message that we get early on. And I think it's, that's one thing. I don't know whether that's good or bad, but that certainly contributes to not following that. Um, and even if not the tail in particular, I, th I it's, a, it's kind of a running question in the developmental work. If we, if we were, um, if we weren't told some of the things we're told to do, that are products, products of ideas um, that are not based on movement or movement potential, but are based on our ideas about what's appropriate or um, uh, appropriate, either gender appropriate, like that's not ladylike, or be a man, or stand up straight, um, be proud, which is not a gender thing, but like these things that are about emotional states, or um, uh, or if not emotional states, projections of some kind of ideal that's not based on what our body, or it's somehow based on our body, but it's it there. They're um, things I hear outside where I try, where I try to shape my body to match that feeling or that look or that idea or that. Um, don't be shy. Don't be a crybaby. Be strong or be funny or be like what, whatever all those other things are that we try to be that are coping ways to cope. Also, like oh, this is how I survive. I survive by being funny, or I survive by being cute, or I survive by being smart, or I survive by being shy, or I survive by like those are all things that are not. They might have arisen from my experience in my body, but then there are also things I put back onto myself as part of how I express myself and how I show up in the world. And that process of things happening is really normal. Like, I mean, it, it is our psychophysical development that we learn how we want to function as emotional creatures with personalities in the world. Um, but I. I think that that, and I don't know if a, if a world exists where there's not something that's told to us about how to be in the world. I mean, I don't know that there's a culture that exists where that doesn't happen. But there's a number of things that I know we're told to do that are like stand up straight or pull your shoulders back or it, these things we're told to do or you know, bring your chest forward or tuck your tail or don't stick your butt out, like don't stick your butt out because there's something wrong with standing like this or um, don't cross your arms because you're angry, don't slouch or like, wh wh you know, whatever those things are that aren't, aren't actually based in our um, kinesiology. They aren't based in our structure, in our anatomy, in how, but, but they're expressive. And then, so I think we do all of that stuff on top of what is natural, whatever natural is, whatever we found as babies, and, and we begin to interweave what gives us the emotional security we need with um, what's available to us as movement choices. And some of those choices are really great and really expressive and make us who we are, that I do what I do and someone else does what they do. And, um, but some of them interfere with us making other choices. So I think that's part of how we lose it too, is that we start trying to respond to not just how, what we feel on the inside, but what we feel on the outside. 
The flip side of that is all those things on the outside of the world that are telling us all those messages are really fascinating too. And those are the things we go explore and we go play with. So those people that we want their approval and so we try to match what they expect of us or what they tell us to do, they're also the people that you know, our parents or our caregivers or our siblings, they're the ones that we like want to play with and that actually make us engage out in the world. So that interacting is an imposition, but it's also the thing that keeps me trying new things. And that, because I don't want to say that, that like it's all bad what we take in. It's also the reason I climb up and learn to walk is because I want to I want to get somewhere and I want to be able to interact and I want to be able to play, but it's a lot about interacting with people too. So it's what brings us up and out and it's also what molds us, that interaction.